because what I was thinking about and trying to formulate a thing is I don't know that modern people living in a modern world understand force. And I'm saying F-O-R-C-E, not F-O-R-T-S. Force. It's something that you have to utilize a lot when you live in a rural, off-grid, or primitive, or homesteading life. Um, and work gets done by applying force. And so when you have like a homestead, most people have tractors um, or backhoes or things like that, which generate a lot of force to do some of the simple tasks like plowing or digging holes for posts, um, lifting things up, big things, hay bales. Um, if you don't have those machines, then it comes down to manpower and how much force you can apply. And I've already done videos on like some mechanical things. Um, that can increase your force, just like we're talking a tractor, etc., etc. Well, there's other not there's other aspects of force uh, in battle. Force multipliers can be the number of troops you have, the technology, the terrain, the conditions. Like, is it raining or snowing or is it hot and sunny or whatever. Um, force on a smaller scale, you need to understand some concepts like force moving with mass behind it like a log rolling or a rock rolling generates a lot of force. And I'm, I'm not giving you technical physics um, labeling for all these things I'm talking about because one, it's been a while since I've taken physics classes and two, I'm not sure you'd understand them if I made them more complex. but. If you start a log rolling like down an incline and it's got any mass which means any you know heft to it if it's six eight inches ten inches around and eight feet long especially if it's brand new you know newly cut greenwood has a lot more moisture in it so it's a lot heavier if you're downhill from it it generates lots of force and it's gonna it's gonna put a whammy on you it's going to um, damage anything in front of it and I don't know that everybody understands those concepts, especially in a modern world. The only thing that we really use on a regular basis in the modern world with force behind it is our vehicles. And I do think most people understand they don't want to crunch their vehicle. Um, but let's, let's go from the physical to now sort of a, not spiritual, but just figurative. A person with a lot of force, whether it be through money or charisma, exerts power over other people who can't or don't want to resist that force. Like pastors, preachers, there are people who give sermons or can talk very eloquently and convince people. Um, to change what they're doing or to do something else or to give them stuff. Uh, recently, my husband was looking at a cup in the store and I, I've been through so many cups and this was supposed to be some kind of special cup, very highly uh, insulated and we talked to three different people in the store and all three of them said, oh yeah, yeah, this cup, this cup's a really good thing. It'll keep ice cold for three days. And I was highly skeptical. Having lived off grid, I understand how ice works. Unless you're really well insulated, ice will melt in hot temps in a few hours. Certainly, in a cup, it's not going to last three days. It doesn't last three days in a cooler. Um, but my husband believed him and we, he bought it and brought it home and sure shooting, it did not keep the ice frozen for three days. But he was persuaded by the opinions of the other people. And that's kind of a force. Well, we've got some major forces at play in our lives today. We have terrorism, which is becoming a bigger force. We have the politics with, um, you know, two presidential candidates that really nobody likes and we kind of don't have a whole lot of choice in the matter and none of us really trust them and really want them in office. But what those people have done is they have held on long enough in their lives and directed the course of their lives towards where they are today. That 
means they have a lot of force. Um, whether it be force of personality, force of their friends, force of the money, um, they have gained their position through work and trial and, and planning. So you gotta think about that. And then we also have natural forces going on. We have flooding in Louisiana. We have two hurricanes off of our coast. Um, you have your local things happening that affect with what goes on with you. And so you, I think people in general need to think about these forces and decide a direction for themselves and exert their force towards that direction. If you want to be more self-sufficient, start putting force, money, time, effort, whatever, towards your goal. Um, and try to look at what's going to affect you and your area and how like bigger things like politics will affect your life. It doesn't matter which candidate you're for and who you like and who you don't. When that person gets elected and, and uh, is able to influence what's happening in our country, things are going to change and we are going to need to be ready for them. If you are someone, um, let's just say, you are a rancher and you have a lot of cattle. Maybe the president, that doesn't affect what happens with you, but maybe it does. If your um, president is an environmental person, cattle cause a lot of waste. You know, laws may be enacted where you have to change the way you do your cattle business. You might want to think about that right now and start working on it before it happens um, so that you're ready. And the same goes for prepping and homesteading and all the other things. Um, take a look at what's going on around you. Take a look at what forces are in play and think about how you're going to counteract or deal with or influence the forces at work around you. And also remember that big forces move big other forces. Like you take a big boulder and crash it into a smaller boulder, the smaller boulder moves more. That's just one of those concepts of physics. And for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if that boulder comes with a lot of force, it's gonna create a lot of change on the smaller boulder. Just think about that. All right, bless you, shalom.